Well, Brad, thank you very much, and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Tuscaloosa, Alabama, the home of the defending national champion, Alabama Crimson Tide. It is Penn State, the number 18 team in the nation, paying a visit on the tide here tonight. The weather, we have had some light showers earlier this afternoon that have come through here. Still should be real good turf here tonight, but there are some scattered thunderstorms in the area that we want to keep an eye on. And there's a lot of humidity as we welcome two of the bluest of bloods as far as college football is concerned. Look at the all time victories by these two great franchises. A year ago, Bama winning its 13th title. Head to head, well, Bama has an edge on Joe Paw and the Nittany Lions, but if you want to flip it, Joe Paterno has an edge on Alabama head coach Nick Saban. When Saban was the head man up at Michigan State, they squared off five times, and Joe Pop has a one game advantage over him. So here are two of the best minds in all of college football. And I must say that this great scene in Tuscaloosa just got grander and grander, ladies and gentlemen. Over 100,000 crammed in here, and thousands more outside the stadium just to be part of this great scene down in Alabama and uh, Kirk Herb Street we see that Bama will get the ball first give us an update on Mark Ingram in the situation yeah, Mark Ingram will be held out another week because of the knee uh, he's gonna hope to come back next week against Duke but for now Trent Richardson will have to carry the load he did it in week one against San Jose State and Eddie Lacy the freshman back behind him will have to be able to help Trent tonight as far as trying to keep Trent at 100 percent health and help him with his endurance. But to the real story, not only Ingram being out, but as we'll see later when Penn State comes out with a true freshman quarterback, how he'll handle this atmosphere will be something to see. Underway in Tuscaloosa. Richardson runs over behind Jones and from a yard in he is coming out. And a penalty flag is thrown on the play as Richardson battles his way to the 26. But remember, there could be a block in the back or a holding call. We'll get this sorted out right now. This is a Big Ten officiating crew, and already we see a Nittany Lion player is injured on the play on the kickoff coverage unit, and he is down. During the return, illegal block in the back. Returning team for 55. Half the distance, first down. This is Gerald Hodges, who is down, who is a just a great player. And there's the block in the back right there, right in front of the official, Chavis Williams. And Hodges goes down, and Hodges is a really unique and interesting player as a backup linebacker. There's Hodges goes down right there. And maybe the contact there with Richardson. But uh, he's getting up now, which is a great sign and a great thing to see there for, for Penn State fans. Well, Greg McElroy, number 12, will lead the Crimson Tide out. You know the story. You know the headline. 31-0 and 0 as a starting quarterback. He last lost in the eighth grade. And the final score of that game was 8-6 to six when a center snap sailed over his head and out of the back of the end zone. That's his last loss as a starting quarterback. Now Herbie has already told you that Trent Richardson will start and it looks like they're going to open up with a little pistol. We'll see if they go up tempo here at the beginning of this game. And here comes Richardson with the first carry slashes to the 15 yard line. So the Alabama offense we have talked about a couple of the key guys. You can't go to sleep on their wide receiving core. Jones is an All-American. Marquise Mays is a burner. And of course, Preston Dial, he does a lot of that dirty work. Michael Williams will also be a tight end as they come up now for second down behind the offensive line. William Vallejos, an underrated offensive center. He could be the best in the SEC, but he doesn't get the credit he deserves. They'll come right back with Richardson. And he barges for the first and ten. Now on defense for the Nittany Lions and that was Cola Santi, one of the linebackers making that stop. Here are the fellows up front. Ogbu and Crawford keep an eye on them. We'll see if Lattimore and Still can hold up on the other side. They replaced all three linebackers but these are good ones. Stupar, Cola Santi, and Baju can flat play. Three of these youngsters are back from a year ago. 
Castorino coming off of offseason surgery. And now it is first down and 10 against Alabama and McElroy coming out from the 20 yard line. Here is his first pass of the evening. Has time incomplete. And I believe Jones slipped on that play. Did he, Herbie? Yeah, Something he did. Happened. Julio Jones on his cut actually lost his footing. Uh, in the Penn State right now, the one thing they have to do when you face an experienced and balanced offense, right at the top of his break, comes to the outside, ball is thrown on time, but when your receiver goes down, obviously you're not going to be able to execute there. But Penn State's defense, guys, I mean, they are breaking in three new linebackers, but you talk about stability with Tom Bradley and Joe Paterno always putting out a great defensive unit tonight. Jones goes off to the sideline on this play. He was matched against Danton Lynn, an outstanding corner. They come back with the running play and very close to a first down that time. One of the things that Mark Ingram does so well in these zone plays is he uses his vision. This time it's Richardson with a couple jump cuts, but it's his eyes. You have to be a patient runner and a powerful runner with that explosion. And that's exactly what Trent Richardson can do. You can see how shifty he is there. And remember, at 5'11", 225 pounds, Mark Ingram very happy to see number three getting off to a good start. And Jones has returned, number eight, Julio Jones. Off for a play, he will be to the right side of the formation. Darius Hanks comes down toward the bottom of your screen, and an extra blocker is put in by Jim McElvain. High and incomplete. Trying to put the ball in number eight's hands that time. Penn State on third down, one of the best in the country last year. Tom Bradley electing on third and short. Great move. He walked his corners all the way up on the line of scrimmage, challenging the All-American Julio Jones to try to offset the uh, the balance there and the timing between the quarterback and Jones, and it's well played by Penn State. So Davon Smith and Justin Brown go back deep. Toward the bottom of the screen is the fastest man on this Penn State team, number 20. And a big lift for that Nittany line defense as they make Alabama hunt it away from the, their 16-yard line, and they keep it away from Davon. There's the fair catch. Made it about the 33-yard line, and the Nittany Lions will have the ball for the first time here tonight in this showdown between the SEC and the Big Ten in Alabama. Welcome you back to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. And you are watching the SEC on ESPN from the home of the Crimson Tide of Alabama, Tuscaloosa. Scoreless. And with Kirk Herb Street, I'm Brent Musburger. Aaron Andrews is also along with us. And score number one is the freshman quarterback, Rob Bolden. Uh, here he is, true freshman on the road for the first time for Joe Paterno. Rob Bolden had a great game in week one against Youngstown. 29, but now he's on the road. Evan Royster in an ISO play goes nowhere against this tied defense. As we take a look, Dante Hightower, number 30, and he's a dandy, makes the first stop for Coach Saban. There are your key guys and big, big receivers in this game. Brett Brackett caught two touchdowns last week, and he will be very active. Question marks here about the offensive line. Stefan Wisniewski moved from center to guard this year. Can they hold up against this tied defense? We're about to find out. And the youngster's going to put it up for the first time and fires it in. Waved off, incomplete. Had it been held on to right there by Smith, would have been a first down. He was right there, Irby. I, I like how they move Bolton here early. All the hype, the noise, the pressure from Alabama's defense. Get him away from that pressure. Throw the ball to the outside. And, boy, Smith gives a pretty good effort there to try to get his fingers underneath the, that football to make the catch. The defensive back is a story. That's a true freshman, number 28, Demarcus Milner. The normal corner over there is coming off Achilles surgery. Saban telling us he'll play the slot man tonight. Kirkpatrick is on the other side, one of the most highly recruited corners two years ago. Now the screen, and they can't break out on top of it as the rush was coming. But Herbie, what did you think of Rob Bolden's poise there? Well, he, he knows 
knows that when he gets to third and long that Nick Saban and Kirby Smart are going to dial up every kind of blitz imaginable. And that's the challenge for any quarterback, let alone Rob Bolden. Two guys come in scot-free. They bring more than you can handle. They confuse the offensive line. Really nothing that Rob Bolden could have done there except throw the ball away. Jones is back for Anthony Ferris punt. Julio Jones takes a sprinter's stance. He's on the tied 30 yard line. Farah hangs it high, forces the fair catch. Ball is loose on the ground. And number eight dives back down on it. Take a look at this, Herbie. That's some jitters for both teams early. Julio Jones were playing Javier Arenas, and his home man actually runs into him that time. Looked like John Fulton, the freshman, coming back to help out on a block, runs into him, causes the ball going in the air, and Julio Jones with those big hands secures the ball before Michael Malti jumps on it. And we'll see what Jim McElwain said to his quarterback, Frank McElroy, who misfired on two passes on that first series. Now Richardson, remember, was averaging better than six yards a carry. He carried it three times on their opening series, and uh, they move Trent Richardson, and they go empty. Let's see what the Nittany Lions come up with defensively. They'll rush three. McElroy down middle high. Julio, and it's a first down across midfield. Number eight, Julio Jones. 21 yards. Now the safety, Nick Suke, starts to move up. And when Suke comes up, it actually, right behind the ball, is thrown. You talk about an accurate throw by Greg McElroy. He recognizes the hole. The safety comes up, kind of robbing, hoping to have an underneath route. Penn State guesses wrong, and McElroy makes them pay for it. And Jim McElwain stays with an empty call. McElroy, the Rhodes Scholar candidate, can't find anybody open, and he'll be brought down at the line of scrimmage that time. Devin Still, the junior from Wilmington, Delaware, making the play for the Lions. The reason Jim McElwain, Alabama's offensive coordinator, is staying with empty is he feels that he has an advantage with the skill. Playing in space, make Penn State play in space, but this time, great coverage downfield. The, the pass protection was okay, but McElroy had nowhere to go, and eventually, he just ate the football. Jim McElwain there on the far left, one of the top offensive coordinators in the game. Your man from Missoula, Montana. Second down and 11. They stay with the empty look. Down the middle, and complete to the 35-yard line, Darius Hanks. The junior from Georgia, and it is first and 10, and Bama moving through the air with 13 more yards. The key in an empty set is the pass protection. If Greg McElroy has time, he's accurate enough quarterback with the great skill that he has around him to be able to attack this Penn State defense. That time he finds the opening. Will Tom Bradley dial up a blitz? McElroy stays empty. Here they come. Can't get there. In underneath the maze. And Mays, short of the first down, he's the speedster, and he was being brought down by Stupar. Brent, you're right. They brought some pressure there, but they dropped a couple of the defensive linemen back. They don't want to leave their defensive backs in man-to-man -man situations right now with McElroy kind of on the accelerator. He's got Penn State's defense back on their heels right now. They're being very, very aggressive with the play calling and the tempo. Look at second and two. This entire series has been designed. Here's the quarterback draw for McElroy to pick up the first and ten, but hold on. There's a penalty flag thrown by the referee from behind the play. Whitfed. And if you did not hear us at the top of this broadcast, this is a Big Ten crew. These two will go back to Happy Valley next year, and obviously that will mean SEC referees up in Big Ten territory. Offense number 65. Ten yards. And folks, that is a story. That's Warmack, and there are very, very few holding calls against this Crimson Tide offensive line over the last two years. Yeah, Chance Warmack's one of the top young offensive linemen in the SEC. The left guard that time gets his big paw and just pulls down this Penn State defensive tackle. Second down and 12. Staying empty. They spread the field. McElroy looks back middle. Touchdown, Crimson Tide. 
Kevin Norwood, the red shirt freshman from Mississippi. A 36 yard scoring strike. Jeremy Shelley on to attempt the extra point. From 20 yards in, he'll be a tied kicker. Get a little bit further out, they will switch to Cade Foster. 7 0. The tide rolls on their second possession. And now it'll be up to the true freshman, Rob Bowman, and the Nittany Lions to answer. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Hampton Hotels. At Hampton, we love having you here. And in part by Bud Light Live, the just right taste of Bud Light with a refreshing splash of 100% natural lime flavor. We welcome you back to Tuscaloosa. Herbie, too many weapons. Uh, Penn State's going to have to think about dime. They had the five receivers coming out. You're going to show the folks on that, uh, that replay after this kickoff. I see that Stephon Green has gone back there with Smith for the Nittany Lions. They're really going to try to get field position here if they can. Yeah, Alabama did a nice job of spreading out the field and taking advantage of the great athletes that they have. And Greg McElroy, seasoned veteran, made some good decisions there and threw the ball with great accuracy. Shaken up. That was the picture of him as Cade Foster kicks it. This is Stephon Green, the backup running back, looking for a seam, and he barges out just short of the 25 yard line. Let's check in for an update and let's send you to Reese Davis. Reese? Brent, I want to tell you how Notre Dame and Michigan finished up. Four point lead for the Wolverines. Final play, Dane Chris looking, going to heave it up. And he's a way too far. Nobody had a chance. 28-24 Michigan. Denard Robinson over 500 yards of offense. Anybody say hi, Spin? Yeah, interesting. Denard has put together wonderful back-to-back -back weeks race. And here we're taking a look at a true freshman. And that would be Bolden back in the gun now. Picks it up and hands it off to Davon Smith, the speedster. So it looks like the Nittany Lions are going to try to get 20 some touches here, Herbie, with that speed. Yeah, the great speed against the SEC speed. That's one way to answer it. But Alabama is going to play man-to-man -man on the Penn State wide receivers, and they're going to put nine guys in the box to stop Evan Royster and Stephon Green and put the game in the hands of Rob Bolton. Until Bolton and his group of wide receivers prove that they can get away from man coverage, Alabama will not allow Penn State to run the football. Well, 28 would be the target, the freshman. Royster is the running back. On second down, little draw play, and Royster battles his way out to the 34-yard line. That is just short of a first down so here comes a big third down call for Galen Hall upstairs does he stick with Royster that would be the conservative and the expected approach or will he run a little play action here and come up firing on this third down let's see there's Galen former quarterback at Penn State once the head coach down at Florida and Gainesville here comes his first big play call of the night third down and one down seven to call a timeout here. He's not going to get this play off. He's got two timeout. seconds. Yeah. They, they called that from the sideline. He didn't even see the play clock. Part of being a true freshman. However, you, it's such a good point you just made about uh, that's part of being a true freshman. You don't know that the clock is ticking. 
Um, the other thing, Jay Paterno said, you know, he's not going to be able to change too many play calls down there with the noise, and yeah. he just doesn't have the experience. So yeah. that's that's what uh, Nick Saban's counting on here tonight. Yeah, and I think if you're Penn State, you've got to put him in a position to call plays that no matter what the look is, you have a chance to execute. It's going to come down to Penn State can't be too conservative with a true freshman. If they run and then run, they're going to be facing too many third and longs, and against Alabama's defense on third and long, anybody is going to struggle, let alone a true freshman. So they've got to take some chances on early downs, maybe to give Bolden a shot downfield against some of the inexperience in Alabama's secondary, because they're great, they're very athletic, but they're inexperienced as well. One of the interesting things about Alabama is that Nick is a little cautious with his defensive play calling tonight. He doesn't want to confuse them, and uh, they barge right straight ahead for the first down. So they came up, and that's a big first down for the Lions. And let's check in now with a third member of our team, Aaron Andrews. Hey, Brent, a big story on Alabama's defense tonight. Linebacker Courtney Upshaw. He's actually a game-time decision, and he hasn't been out there in this series, Brent. He was out there the last time during the third down, but not in this series here. He tweaked his ankle last week. They said, are you ready to go? He said, I can try it, but they're only going to use him for third down situations, guys. On first and 10, fires incomplete and underneath. Now, remember that Alabama is also without Marcel Darius. Darius, the defensive player of their national championship victory over Texas. He was suspended for a couple of games. This, the second one. And obviously, he'll be back for the stretch in the SEC. And there is Darius over the sideline trying to coach him up a little bit. Yeah, he's trying to keep that defensive line of the game. He's a very engaging young man. He's looking forward to having a chance of coming back next week against Duke and then getting into conference play against Arkansas in a couple weeks. Justin Brown is out far to the left for the Lions. Second down and 10 for Rob Bolden. Inside fake is a beauty. Comes up and here comes Smith again, the speedster. And he goes right to that first down marker, steps out of bounds very close to it. I love the call here by Galen Hall. There again, Brent, you talked about Davon Smith, the speed that he has off of the play action fake. He came in motion, so he came in motion with a lot of speed, and Alabama didn't have anybody to run with him. He's all alone out there. He turns a corner, picks up a couple blocks downfield, and is able to pick up a first down. It is also quite clear that Galen Hall knows that that's a freshman corner on that side. They are staying away from Drake Kirkpatrick so far. Stephon Green now comes in as the tailback. And here's Stephon on a cutback into the middle. And he is rustled to the ground by Kerry Murphy, who's going to see a lot of action tonight for the Tide. Brent, you've talked a lot about Milner, but even if you look at the others in the secondary, outside of Mark Barron and Drake or Patrick, you're going to, Alabama's going to play seven defensive backs tonight. Two of them, of the seven, have played a lot of football, meaningful snaps. So it's not just Milner out there. There's a lot of youth and a lot of inexperience that has to hold up there in man coverage. Milner comes up now to bump. Green and Royster are together. Kirkpatrick is at the bottom of your screen. Bolden going to go at the freshman and grabbed. A beautiful catch by Derek Moy working that sideline and already they are attacking relentlessly against 28. That's 33 yards. It's a good job here again. First and 10 early down. He's got to look for a chance to get downfield. Little stutter move there. He gets by Milner and actually not only does he beat Milner, but Bolton actually goes after the experience of Mark Barron there using his eyes to keep Barron to the middle of the field and then getting the ball thrown down to the outside and he didn't hang it up in the air too long. Stephon Green is alongside Rob Bolden. Beautiful play action fake and here comes Smith and he gains no more than two yards and Minzy. Now Minzy would be the starting corner. He tore his Achilles tendon. So Nick has got him on the slot receiver much of the time, and you saw number 24 now come up and make this stop. Ordinarily, he would be over at the right corner. Junior college player who doesn't have a lot of experience in himself, but you're right, a tremendous athlete, the starting corner. They feel Milner was the top corner in all high school football last year between he and Drake or Patrick. They have the top two corners in high school football in the last two years. They've got size Brown over there on Milner at the top of your screen. Bolden, though, comes back down in underneath, incomplete, and that was a dangerous pass. 
to his tight end that time, Gilliam, who was in heavy. Now, when you get into third down, this is where Alabama is creative, and this is where they're going to attack Bolden. Now, he's got to remember, he's in field goal range right now. He doesn't need to take any chances. Look for a, a, a guy who he feels might be open, but he's got to get the football out of his hands in a hurry. And number 30, Dante Hightower, is going to bring some pressure. Now, here comes the young man, Courtney Upshaw, for the first time. Aaron Andrews told you about him. He has come in. Will they bring heat now on third down? Bolden under pressure. Fires to it. Up in the air. And intercepted. Picked off inside the five-yard line by Will Lowry. He is the dime defensive back tonight. I just talked about the pressure that Dante Hightower on third down will bring. And because he brought this heat right up the middle, he comes free. The offensive line can't pick him up. That's what we said, young quarterbacks, he's already in field goal range, puts the ball up into coverage, and Lowry makes the pick. Did you see Dante Hightower, number 30, why he's one of the best? He was all over the quarterback. We got a timeout. Uh, the pressure gets right to Bolden, and, you know, I think the offensive line's got to help him out, but Will Lowry right in the middle. He, you know, he's a walk-on from Alabama, from Birmingham Hoover High School, one of the great high school football programs, gets over there, reads the eyes, and hustles over to make that interception. But Dante Hightower created the pressure to force Bolton to throw that ball too soon. Now, every, uh, the coach is told that Dante is their best pass rusher, and frequently they'll move him up on the line out of that linebacking spot. Yep. Now, they go back to a regular... I said here, backed up in the shadow of the goal line. Here comes Richardson. You might remember the championship game. Richardson stepped free against Texas at about this time and broke a big one. And he picks off a first down here. He is dangerous whenever he touches the ball. So everybody talks about what does Alabama lose when they lose a Heisman Trophy winning running back. Well, you have Trent Richardson. Look at the power in his legs. He is a tough guy to bring down. Not only that, he's got the vision. He's got the quickness. So once he breaks the tackle, he's able to accelerate upfield. Jim McElwain said they might miss him in the fourth quarter when they try to run downhill with that toughness that 22 brings to it. Here's your pistol formation now. Hand it back to Richardson. Now behind the left side. Look at him break tackles for another first down Alabama. I remember the last drive. Alabama went right down the field and Greg McElroy with an empty set through the football. Here you see the versatility of Alabama's offense. Now they're going to go line up in the pistol back to back plays. Hand the football off to the big back, the big back Trent Richardson and in two plays they go from being inside their own five yard line to now all the way out to the 30. With that 16 yards now, Richardson has 46 yards and five carries as the Heisman Trophy winner watches from the sideline. They stay back in that formation. There's that short handoff, and behind the left side, again it is Richardson breaking still another tackle. And across the 40-yard line, so the young man who broke all of Emmett Smith's high school records off with another huge run. James Carpenter, 77, a left tackle, and Chance Wormack, the left guard. These last three plays have taken his football game over. We're talking a lot about Richardson, but let's make sure we give some credit to the big guys up front, helping him out and get to that second level where there's a linebacker he's able to make miss and quickly gets into that secondary. He gets a breather, and here is Eddie Lacy, redshirt freshman from Louisiana. Gained over 100 yards last week against San Jose State. Pass protection, and it is dropped by Mays, and it will be second down and 10. I want to take a look at some, some gaudy numbers, and of course, Mark Ingram with the great games against Florida and then the national championship, won the Heisman, and Richardson chipped in with 751 yards, had that big touchdown run against the Longhorns, and uh, there's him to clean that helmet up for him over exactly. there. Huh? That's what the Heisman Trophy winners reduced tonight to one of those equipment guys. What a great attitude. Mark Ingram has second down and 10 now for McElroy. And there's a handoff to Lacey. And they are starting to gash this Penn State defense. They're having it their way. 
Vallejos is the ringleader of that offensive line, and Herbie mentioned Carpenter. Barrett Jones, he's an all-conference lad from Memphis at right guard, and they got one of the most highly recruited linemen over at right tackle, D.J. Fluker, coming along, too, right now, and here's Trent again. And one of the challenges for Penn State, I'm watching Alabama continue to rotate different L per personnel groupings, and there's Penn State with the same 11 or 12 guys that are standing out there on the field. They're getting tired on this drive especially. And a wildcat formation is lined up. Here comes Richardson. They told us they would use it tonight. And he barges close to the 25-yard line out of the wildcat. the South for Penn State, and they've talked about how it's not going to affect them. They've had a really difficult camp as far as the heat and the conditioning is concerned, but there's nothing that Penn State could ever face in their two-a-days to prepare them for the heat and humidity that they're facing tonight. Sticking with the Wildcat. McElroy is at the top of your screen out wide. Jones comes as a fake. Richardson spins off it and so here's something for the Gators and some of the other coaches around the SEC to ponder Richardson and the Wildcat as we check in with Aaron Andrews Herbie you were mentioning the temperatures actually before the game Penn State said hey that's the first thing going right for us that kick it was like what in the upper 80s at noon today when we were doing game day it was about 105 out on the field Quick snap up by McElroy, who moved on back, complete out of Julio. Slips a tackle, and he's out of bounds across the 10-yard line. At that time, Penn State did decide to bring a little bit of pressure. Michael Multi, the linebacker, came, and he nobody picked him up. But Greg McElroy recognized that, got the football out to Julio Jones. And what I love to see there, Brent, is the wide receivers willing to block for one another. Marquise Mays helps Julio Jones out. He slips a tackle. That time, he almost took it all the way to the end zone. Jim McElwain uh, told me when they broke down the tape, Herbie, of the National Championship game, Julio Jones did a great job blocking downfield sure. for the tie against that uh, Longhorn second day. Now back in that pistol formation and whistle prior to the snap, and that'll cost the tie. Barrett Jones, Ball maybe. Start. Offense, number 65, five yards. No, it was the other side. First. It was Warmack. Number 65. Herbie, let's uh, take a look now at how Alabama that McElroy did in the red zone last season, brought to you by Verizon. Uh, that's one of the things that Alabama tries to do uh, a little bit of a better job of because, you know, last year, as good as they were as a team, you win the national championship, look at that, 108. So when they get down in this area, they're really focusing on touchdowns and not field goals. And there they get hurt by that penalty. Yeah. So we got a timeout, and uh, we will take a break. Bama driving again and leading Penn State by seven. We welcome you back to ESPN's College Football Prime Time, presented by Hampton Hotels. And in that first quarter, Alabama put 185 yards on the Nittany Lions. Kirby, they averaged better than 10 yards a play in that first quarter, and here they are stalking the end zone again. And I think they kept Penn State on their heels with that versatility and the tempo that Greg McRoy, with that experience, is able to lead. Straight back, waits, fires in zone, touchdown! Goes to Dial, Preston Dial. Well, there is a bonus for doing the dirty work. There's a guy who leads the end of rounds, gets downfield, seals linebackers, and here a little frosting for the big fella. A 97-yard drive after the interception, folks. You're looking at some of the reasons why this team remains number one. Jeremy Shelley. And it is 14-0 Bama. What a touch here by Greg McElroy. Dial is lined up right here. He's going to slip. Baj 
Minshew is the linebacker who's going to run with him. But keep an eye on the safety. It's the second time that Nick Suke is out of position. He's got to be able to get back there and help out. I know Bashu's trying to stay with Dial, but Suke's got to help. And how about the job that Trent Richardson does? Penn State brings a blitz. That's how you handle a blitz. That was Devin still actually the defensive tackle. But Penn State did bring a blitz. The guard picked him up. And Trent Richardson shows you his strength when he picks up Devin Still at 6'5", 3'10", and buries him. He submarined him. Herbie, and on that drive, he carried five times for 73 yards, and he has also picked up four first downs. Yeah, what a drive, and then he throws yeah, that then block he, that you talked shows about. how he's an unselfish player. And again, Mark Ingram, it's great to see Mark Ingram. For all you superstar high school players, that you get injured, you don't think it's important to be around your team. It's very important. There's a guy who won the Heisman Trophy last year. Instead of sitting down on the end of the bench, he's involved Here's Powell. He went 100 for a touchdown on a kickoff return a week ago. But in against a different breed of special team here. And he's down on the 24. We check in again with Reese Davis. Reese. Brent, as you guys know in this Taco Bell studio update, LSU barely escaped last week on the road against Bandy. A little fly sweep look for Russell Shepard. And the speedy kid for LSU will take it in from 30 yards out. And the hat has a 7 0 lead on Vanderbilt. Reese, that's basically the same play that he dashed for a touchdown against Virginia Tech. We'll see if they can hold on and add to it this time. Herb. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. It's First never, it's never easy. Down. It's never easy for LSU. Evan Royster's back. Critical, critical series here for the Nittany Lions. Down two scores early. Bolden on first down steps away from the pressure takes off and he is out to the 28 yard line. It's a nice the youngsters impressive. Yeah, you know I, that? I'm impressed with his poise and, and, and Nick Saban talked about it this week. Penn State tried to downplay it but he played in his first game and I don't care if it's at home and I don't care who it's against. He was 20 of 29 and demonstrated a lot of poise leading his offense. And when you're a true freshman quarterback with the defenses today and how sophisticated they are it can be overwhelming. But you have to be impressed with what we've seen from Rob Bolden tonight. We haven't been able to get the ball to Brett Brackett, who had a big game last week. And here is Royster. They have been stopped just short of that first down. And that was Ed Stinson, the backup linebacker. He's playing a lot in place of Upshaw. Upshaw's been on the field a couple of times. He makes that stop. I think it's important for Galen Hall and Jay Paterno to continue to try to find ways on early downs to be aggressive. First and ten, they came out. They wanted to try to get the ball thrown downfield, but it was covered to Derek Moy. You like to see that because Alabama's too strong defensively to be too conservative with the play caller. They've got Stephon Green as a running back. They do not show ISO on this third and short. And Stephon didn't need a lead fullback. And Alabama read that fact and they were spread out just a little bit and Stefan came right behind the right side of the offensive line and the chains move. He's a great change of pace you know, from Evan Royster who's more of a power back. Stefan Green the coaches have challenged. I remember when you and I and Matt Mellon were there for the spring game they said right. hey you know the potential has been there for a couple of years but when you get when you get your chances to come in for Evan Royster you've got to be explosive running back for us and he's trying to be that this year. Moy is out to the right. Four receivers looking for him. Got him on a slam. They got Moy for a first and ten across the 45-yard line. That's a great job of throwing in rhythm. Again, first and ten. Great call by Galen Hall. Get the quarterback back. Get the football out of his hands quickly. And I'll tell you what, going up against Drake or Patrick, that time you see the experience of Derek Moy gets to the inside and makes the throw relatively easy for Bolden. But I love the call. Back, throwing the ball in first and ten and getting it out of his hands quickly. Now they match Percy up against Milner on this first and ten from the 45. Golden. Here comes the end around, and it's Kersey. Got a block. And Kersey still going across the 20 yard line. They brought him in off the bench. Mark Barron, their All American safety, and the leader of that defense, saves a touchdown, a 24 yard run. One of the ways you slow down an aggressive athletic defense is you try screens and draws and reverses. And that time, 
Trey Kirkpatrick on the back side loses contain. He collapses down, starts to chase the ball, and the speed of Percy in the open field is pretty lethal. So Barrett now in that defense. Remember what I told you. They're inexperienced. Nick's concerned about him lining up in the same spot. It's not last year's defense. Yeah, we got a timeout. Alabama. So Alabama will They're burn first. a timeout here right now. And coach is not happy about that last play. He's there with Kirby Smith, and he's telling him so right now. Timeout. We welcome you back to Tuscaloosa. Alabama, a muggy night here down Bama Way with Kirk Herb Street. I'm Brent Musburger. Nice to have you along with us. Tide has rolled in for two touchdowns now, and the Nittany Lions are at the red zone. Stephon Green will be in that lineup, lined up behind Zordich. That familiar ISO look of the Nittany Lions. Stephon behind the fullback. Bangs into him, but not before Stephon Green picks up a few yards. Nick Gentry was there also. We talked about the play calling by Galen Hall, and with a young quarterback, you want to avoid those third and long situations. Rob Bolton tonight versus the blitz, only one of four through an interception. When he's not been blitzed and he's had time to throw, he's four of five. So, and, and that has a lot to do with trying to guess. When Bama might be coming, more often than not, it's second and long and third and long. Now, Herbie, no penalties against the Nittany Lions yet in this game, which is big. Play fake. Come in underneath now to Powell. Fumble. Picked up by the Tide. End zone ahead needs a block. Kirkpatrick has got it. Lester, the safety, is wrestled free. Ball comes out. Kirkpatrick tries to pick it up instead of falling on it. Nittany Lions tell you ladies and gentlemen a perfect example of a youngster trying to score when he need to get down on the ball but let's see now was he down was it marked it looked like they're gonna say Drake or Patrick was down when he fell on top of the football of course this one this it'll go to instant replay there's no question about that play is under review. <laughs> you know, before he even had a chance <laughs> he didn't even need the call you know, no, we're exactly. reviewing this bit Woo, how about believe. the initial fumble here first yeah, Chaz Powell, a little bit of extra effort in the Alabama defense. Very well taught in trying to rip that ball out. And here comes Lester with some speed and a convoy. Look at all these defensive backs ahead of him saying, look out. And Drake, Drake or Patrick actually pointed behind him saying, look out for Moy. Moy gets the ball out. Ball's still live here. Now, right here they say Kirkpatrick is down. That his back fell on the, on the ground while he possessed the football before it came out. Football comes out here. Live ball at this point. I don't think that's going to be disputed at all. But I think it's the, when Drake or Patrick jumped on top of Lester's fumble. That ball's out. Ball's out. That's a fumble. And then Lester breaks free, and Derek Moy just rips it away from him. Watch this. Strips it. Now the issue becomes Kirkpatrick. Is he right. down right here as he goes after the loose ball? That's what they're saying right there. It should be Alabama's Flat on ball. His back. It should be Alabama's you ball. You agree is their ball right there? Alabama's ball at the one yard line. Because he wasn't juggling the football once he picked it up. I mean he had he, he secured the football. Not yet. Right there. And then boom he falls and then it comes out. Yeah I, I agree with you Herbie. He had rolled over on his yeah. back. I think you're absolutely right. And, it, and it's just Penn State. Last couple times they've had a ball. They're moving the football. They've got their chances. The last time they were down in, inside the red zone, Bolden threw one up into coverage, and Alabama intercepted it, so they didn't even get a chance at three points. But now here they are again down in the red zone, and now this happens. Yeah, two, two red zone turnovers on their last, last two drives. I mean, they had an interception down here on the three, and now pending... Instant replay. And again, as I, as I told you, this is a uh, Big Ten officiating crew and one of the better referees in that conference. Dave Whitfield will come out. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Penn State's ball is down. He said Penn State's ball. I think he meant to say Alabama's ball. 
The crowd, the crowd didn't hear him say Penn State ball, but he pointed in the direction. And, and Coach Saban well, heard he, him clearly. Well, now he is. Now he is pointing to Penn State football. Well, that. Well, this is going to be. Well, apparently that was the ruling on the field. I thought there was a little bit of confusion. I'm with you. Oh, this is going to. This will be good. You want to keep that camera right on Nick Saban. I, I think Joe Pogs. Was that their defense that was out on the field? Yeah. Did I oh, see yeah. Sue Can the guys out there? Sure. Penn State thought, yeah. you know, it's goal line stand time. I was a little bit confused about the initial call on the they, field, to tell you the truth. Because they didn't make a, they, they didn't yeah, I would, make a, a, a gesture or sign to right. say whose ball it was. They just kind of well, all came you together. You can see how they're positioning themselves. They're positioning for Penn State football. I mean, there's the umpire right there over the football, okay? That means that's that's Penn State football right there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Look at the side of the ball he's on. Well, after all that, what was that a loss of about what? 80 yards? 85 yards? <laughs> we haven't had one quite like that. Evan Royster will come in with an ISO here, and Zordich will be the lead fullback. There'll be a couple of Joe Pa tight ends. You better believe that. Halfway is one of them. They give to the fullback. And Zordich, Hightower, number 30, clinging to him at about the five yard line. This is similar to when Rob Bolton, as a true freshman, was in the red zone. And I kind of first guessed and I said on third down, you've got a field goal, don't throw it into coverage. And then he ended up throwing it into coverage. Same here. Inside your own five yard line, right there in front of the student section. The lineman can't hear you. Just don't make a mistake here. So we had three fumbles <laughs> from that wild play. Yeah. That'll be one of the plays of the night. Here's Royster bouncing out. Royster trying to get the first down. Yes, does indeed. That's his strongest run of the night as he held off the DBs and Milner finally brings him down. Lester could not stop him short of the first down at well, time. Again, this, this is a defense breaking in nine new starters. Some of these guys have played, but they lost 13 three-year defensive players. And this is the area that concerns Kirby Smart and Nick Saban the most. That's a tackle. You know, last year, Alabama makes that play. And now it's third down and eight, and they're coming in to blitz you. But Evan Royster gives tremendous effort there to get his offense out of a hole and pick up a first down. Stephon Green checks in as the running back for the Lions. And in the middle, Ed Stinson, the Jack linebacker tonight in the Bama terminology, making the stop. National championships at LSU and last year at Alabama. Now the freshman Rob Bolden out of the state of Michigan. Orchard Lake, Michigan. With a second down. Short drop and his receiver was out of bounds over here. Milner. They had Moy out of bounds. So it'll be third down and nine. McQuarrie, who works with the wide receivers, signaling for who they want on the field, the personnel now, and he stops Smith here. This is a great job. We've talked a lot about Milner. Rent your guys coming in. It's a great job. This is what Nick Saban wants. Slowing him down at the line of scrimmage. That's a veteran receiver that couldn't even get off the line of scrimmage because of the jam that time by Demarcus Milner. That's an outstanding job of covering and playing bump and run coverage. Third and nine for the Lions. Here they come. There's Dante Hightower. He is down, Herbie. They have put him down. He's their best pass rusher. Where did offense from the end? A delay a game, I heard them call, but did they get the timeout call yeah. over there on the sideline, Herbie? The coaches are doing a good job realizing that, that Bolton's got enough going on that right. if the clock's running down, they're trying to help him out. Okay, we'll take a break. Nine minutes left in the first half. Bama up by two touchdowns. Reese Davis with you on ABC tonight, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series racing in Richmond, and the 12-driver field for the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup will be set. 
Ten spots have been clinched. Five drivers mathematically alive for the two remaining spots currently held by Greg Biffle and Clint Boyer. Carl Edwards is your leader. A little over 50 laps into the 400 lap race. All right, Reese, thank you. And here, the Nittany Lions in third and long again. <laughs> Stephon Green will come in as the running back behind the freshman, Bolden. And Bolden almost threw a pick six. Dangerous to pick on Kirkpatrick on the outside. That's a great job by a young secondary in disguising coverage against a true freshman quarterback who thought he might have seen one thing, and then all of a sudden he thought the corner Drake or Patrick would stay with Bracket, but he came off of Bracket unexpectedly to the quarterback, so he threw it out there, and he's very fortunate that Dre did not step in front of that and intercept it. Uh, Julio Jones is set to receive this punt. He's standing on the tide, 45-yard line. Booming pump, fair catch. Right at the Alabama 40 yard line. And uh, Herbie, here is our Chick fil A drive recap. Uh, they started early in this game running the football with Trent Richardson. He got off to a great start, replacing Mark Ingram tonight and showing what he can do and how physical a runner he can be. And that made things a lot easier for Greg McElroy to settle in, make some plays. But really, it was Richardson, another big run. I tell you, he's done so much that by the time we finally were able to get Greg McElroy settled down, that I think a lot of the pressure and the balance here has, I think, been the key for Alabama. Trent Richardson checks back in. Eight yards short of 100 here in the first half. That slip screen to Julio Jones. Strong outside receiver. And he extends himself toward that first down marker, battling Stephon Morris. It's the first time in his career that Julio Jones has been 100% healthy. He battled through some nagging injuries last year. Didn't quite have the tr his, his sophomore campaign the way he had hoped. But now this year, he's ready to go. He got off to a great start last week against San Jose State. Bigger, stronger, faster than anybody else on the field, especially the Penn State defense trying to stop him and contain him. Now Mays is back in the Wildcat. And they bring Julio around, and Mays keeps it number four to the outside. So he is the second Alabama player to run the Wildcat tonight. Lynn defensively there for the Lions. Earlier it was Richardson who checks back into the game. It's a totally different look when Richardson runs the Wildcat versus Mays. Mays' quickness and acceleration. You make one mistake and he's going to be able to move to the outside in a hurry and pick up 20 or 30 yards, whereas Richardson's much more physical style runner. Alabama averaging 10.3 yards a play, 217 yards of offense, 14 points here in the first. And from the pistol, Nittany Lions tried to get some pressure. And you got to really be careful with Richardson if you give him a crease. Baju up to make a fine tackle, number 15. And you can see that Alabama has not allowed a 100 yard rusher in 35 games and one Penn State is number three and Richardson is closing in here in the first half. He has 94 yards against the Lions right now. Six yard shot third down and short. He's your back replacing the Heisman Trophy winner Mark Ingram who will not play tonight out of uniform. Here he comes. Twist free and picks up the first down. Well, it's fun to watch this Alabama offense rotating so many different players on and off the field. And I think it, it's all based around having the veteran leadership of Greg McElroy. I, you know, I think today in college football, you see so many offenses that are spread offenses, quarterbacks in the shotgun. You're seeing some kind of zone read off of that and play action off of the zone read. Alabama's old school. They, can, they have the versatility to go to the spread in the shotgun like you're going to see here, but they can also line up in the eye formation and try to run it right at you. Alexander, one of those subs, Herbie, he is now slotted to the right, number 82. Pressure coming from the Nittany Lions. Can they get to McElroy? No, they cannot. On the move, and he will throw this away and live to play another down. 
You could see that time that Stupar was coming off the corner. Well, this is the first time that Penn State's gotten home and actually forced him out of the pocket. McElroy up to this point had completed four passes against the pressure. This time the pressure comes and it forces him out, but it's great coverage downfield. And Stupar may have found something. He was telling the official that Fluker hooked his jersey as he came around that time. Remember now, Fluker is inexperienced. He's a great big tackle on that side. I'm sure the coaches are seeing the same thing that we are up here right now. Second down and ten. McElroy drops it off of that spot. Stupar was coming, and here comes Richardson. A beautiful play call, and McElroy showing you why he's a Rhodes Scholar all the way. Went to the hot spot beautifully. What a quarterback. Uh, Jim McElwain deserves the credit for the call with the screen here. He gets a convoy of blockers downfield, allows the pressure to come to him. McElroy patiently waits for him to come, drops it down right over top of the defenders, and then he's got three blockers just basically turning around, waiting for Trent Richardson to follow him downfield. So Richardson has rushed for 96, and now 29 yards as a receiver. They come back with Richardson. And he is stopped short of the five yard line. And Colasanti, Chris Colasanti, number 48, making the stop. Another one of the Michigan players who had migrated down Pennsylvania way. Let's see if we can see the shoe come off. Right? Richardson fighting for so many tough yards. That time it looks like he gets caught up and. Actually, Blahos to centers gets pushed back that time. Ran out of it, did he? Yeah. Right, second down now and goal. Bam up by two touchdowns on Joe Paterno and the Nittany Lions. Richardson, and he will not get it done because of Sean Stanley. Big number 90 rose up that time. Defensive lineman out of Maryland. Backup fella. Well, the, the strength of Penn State's defense is the defensive line. Stanley comes in to, to spell Eric Lattimore, but Devin still is big and strong. Agbu up there. Some experienced guys. Jack Crawford has to have a good game as well, but for Penn State to be able to slow down Alabama, we can talk about blitzing all they want, all we want, but really up front, Penn State's got to be able to do a good job of holding the point. Set a couple of fellows on to the Odrick onto the NFL. He was a great player for him last year in that defensive line here. And there's a flag. There's a penalty. Costly. This will be the fourth penalty Ball against start. Alabama. Offense, number 65. Five yard penalty. The down remains third. Penn State has not been penalized, but they have turned it over twice down in the red zone. And this will back McElroy up now for this third down. Give him a little daylight if he wants to throw. He's got great targets. Hanks will come to the slot. Jones is on the outside. Deep safety. McElroy looks slot. Throws over the top incomplete. Julio Jones was the intended target. Nick Suke had dropped off to a deep center field and Morris with coverage and there's another penalty flag. Time McRoy wanted Julio Jones at 6-4 against Stephon Morris at 5-8. Put the ball up high where only Julio would have a chance to bring it down. Illegal formation. Five men in the backfield. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. So uh, quickly, Coach Saban sends the field goal unit onto the field here, Herbie. And that will mean we're in close enough, and that would indicate that Shelley will attempt this. Now, the backup quarterback, A.J. McCarron, and is he ever a good prospect? He'll be in that battle to take over the Crimson Tide next year. He'll be your hold. He'll be number 10. He'll put it down now for Shelley. This will be a 31-yarder. And he's got it. Bama goes up by 17. ESPN's College Football Primetime brought to you by Mercedes Benz, located on the web at MBUSA.com. And the Capital One Cup. Log on to ESPN.com slash Capital One Cup to vote for the Capital One Cup Impact Performance of the Week. 
the Paul Bear Bryant Museum here in Tuscaloosa. Great memories when you take a stroll around that office. One of the legendary head coaches of all time would have been 97 years old today. Well, leading 17, the Bears old team under Nick Saban now won a championship last year. He'll kick it off again. Kate Foster will put the ball on the tee, and there's McElroy talking to Jim McElwain upstairs at what he saw. Indy Lions would love to get on the board here. 354 being shut out of the first half, had two golden opportunities, and turned it over both times. Stefan Green feels it. Nice return out to the 30 and uh, Herbie. Time for our Aflac trivia question. Tonight's question. Aflac. Who were the MVPs of the first three Super Bowls? Hmm. Were you born? Uh, I don't <laughs> think so. I don't think so, but I've seen highlights. No, you give that you give that a few. I've got a I got a name or two, but I Oh, we got a player down. I'm sorry. That's Stefan Green, the return man. Looks like he's pulling that his toe up here. Do you uh, do you have a clue as to uh... I, I, Bart Starr's one of them? Yeah, uh, clearly. I'm gonna Joe Namath because we're here. Yeah, Joe you know it had to be because we're here. Yeah. You got them both yeah. because here's yeah, the that's... tricky part of it. Bart Starr won it in Super Bowls one and yeah. two. Yep. Former Alabama quarterback before going to play for for Vince Lombardi, and then of course the the greatest performance of all in one game, Joe Namath. No doubt, called his shot. So there's your answer to your half like trivia question. First down and ten. Smith and Royster are in this backfield. With the freshman Rob Bolden. Uh, he is stuck big time. Was that Harris who slammed in there, number five, Jarrell Harris? They moved him from the outside in to inside linebacker during camp. And well, that, that's the one thing. When you when you lose Rolando McClain, who to me was equivalent to losing Tim Tebow for Florida, Florida's offense. Uh, you need guys like Harris and guys that have been around even though they have, don't have a lot of game reps guys at least are familiar with the system to step up and Harris has played pretty well tonight pretty active. The second down Royster into the backfield for the Lions. Fumble picks it back up. He'll keep it himself. Get back to the line of scrimmage on a, on a busted play. I'll tell you who the Tide are doing a great job of defending here tonight is Brett Brackett, number 83. And the Crimson Tide took a big look at him in the videotape this week, and they said he plays like an H back. He's a big fella. He is 6'6, and Saban was really determined to keep the ball out of his hands. And he won't have to worry now as Graham Zug replaces him and he goes to the sideline. Third down, hold on, because if you're Penn State with the way this game is gone, something very simple or a draw or a screen, hit the ball out of the hands of the quarterback fast, but no chances here. Hightower from a stand-up position is coming. Bolden gets it off incomplete. Davon Smith was working and Mark Barron there defensively, and the Tide will get it back with plenty of time. Herbie, so that's not what the Lions needed here. No, the line did a pretty good job of holding up there. Bolden had time to make a read, but nobody open, no, nobody able to separate from that man-to-man -man coverage downfield. He's been hanging his punch well. Anthony Farah, he's the kickoff man, and Julio Jones would love to get a shot at one here. He's back on the Tides, 25. Off the side of his foot. Just let that roll down at the 32-yard line. Just shy of 70 yards. Greg McElroy and the Alabama offense will have it when you come back. ESPN's College Football Primetime, brought to you by Papa John's, official pizza of your NFL game day.
I'm Reese Davis. Coming up on the Wendy's Halftime Report, the A and ACC stood for awful day. We'll show you what happened to the conference. If there were a two-week Heisman, Denard Robinson would run away with it the way he ran away from Notre Dame. And the Sooners lowered the boomer, if you will, on Florida State. Texas is in a bigger tussle than they expected. So, too, is Oregon against Tennessee. Mark Lou and I will get you up to date at the half. Reese, not a very good day for Boise State. You guys will delve into that. There, folks, is a young man who should be a Remington Award candidate. William Vallejos, a junior from right up the road in Birmingham, did a fabulous job against Texas, once ruined with McElroy. No center exchange problems here. Richardson gets the handoff. They got plenty of time now, Herbie, to work with, but Vallejos is one of those brainiacs who calls out the blocking assignments up front, and McElroy telling us that maybe they have one snap exchange problem the entire year and it usually comes early now, that's remarkable now as often as he's back in the pistol and the gun as he is this time looking down into the mill Hanks has got it first down in a foot race they're in business again across the 30 yard line The tight end, Michael Williams, 89, or to the right there. He's going to clear out the linebackers and give you a little bit of space to work with underneath. And you give these, these receivers from Alabama enough room to work with against the secondary linebackers of Penn State. They're going to make a few people miss and get upfield. That's a good job by Hanks. A good job by Greg McElroy getting him the football in a hurry so he could do some damage. Norwood, who caught one of the two touchdown passes, comes off to the right in this formation. They snap it off, though. Oh, it's dropped by Jones. He was going to run just a little too quickly, Harvey. And looking downfield against Lynn that time. This is interesting because... Greg, uh, Greg McElroy has the option to either run this play to the right. It's his own play. See the linemen? They're running the play to the right. But because the defensive back was so far off of coverage from Julio Jones, Greg McElroy on his own aborted the run play to Trent Richardson and just threw it out there to the left to Julio Jones because of the coverage that he saw. The linemen and the backs, they were running the zone play. Mays is off to the right. Brought down at the 38-yard line. The Nittany Lions bring Macero, a backup defensive lineman. Uh, I think they're, they're forced to right now rotate some bodies. Massaro is sophomore at 6'4", 255. Really does a good job. Looks like Aaron Mabin that time fighting off the edge and gets by James Carpenter. Well, there's a, there was a good one. Wearing that Mabin. 59, he looks like Mabin. He's getting checks. Playing yeah. on Sunday, right? Absolutely. Third down now and long. Julio Jones goes out to the left. Terry Thomas sort of walks out there on him. The Lions rush four. McElroy bounces out to the right. And he's going to uh, step out of bounds. Getting it back to the original line of scrimmage just about. Stefan Morris was the cornerback right there with the time coming down. Well, instead of throwing that football away, at least Greg was able to scramble that time, avoided a little bit of pressure, and, and picked up some yards to give, him, give his team here a real shot at picking up three points. Now, Kate Foster will attempt this one. True freshman out of South Lake, Texas, where, where McElroy played his high school football. Let's watch this 44-yard long leg, this young man. Pulls it to the left. No good. So, if you're Alabama, you're happy you're ahead. But if you're Penn State, you're happy that you're hanging in the neighborhood. Bryant-Denny Stadium. And the last time Penn State's been held scoreless, well, it was the first half of a loss against Notre Dame when they were down by 20. Herbie, they've only got uh, 33 seconds left here. Royster's in the backfield. They'd be crazy to take any chances here. Cut your losses and get into halftime. But Bolden's going to drop it off to Royster. Stays inbounds and then gave up a couple of yards. He'd be second down and 12. You know, Joe Paterno was a little bit unhappy with Royster's weight when he came back to camp. And then this week he said, now Royster's all right. He's, he, he's lost 
some weight. What's, what's your feeling watching him here tonight? Uh, it's tough to run against this Alabama defense, is my feeling, no matter what his weight is. But uh, and I think as far as how he looks, to me, he looks a lot like he's looked the last couple of years, which is fit. But until this quarterback's able to take some of the pressure off of him with a consistent passing game, I think it's, it's, he's struggling right now. Well, Joe Pops down with Aaron Andrews, so let's go to Aaron. Brent, thanks so much. Well, Coach, your defense was able to stop Alabama's offense there, but what's the biggest adjustment you need to make to kind of slow down Trent Richardson? Uh, we've got to come up blocks. we got to tackle. And offensively, we got a better, a better selection of throwing to the different receivers. we got a freshman in there. He's kind of rushing things. But, uh, hey, Alabama's an awfully good football team, well coached. We just got to go in there and try to get a little better. You mentioned your freshman ru rushing things. How do you think he's handled this environment here on the road? I think he did well enough. I mean, I don't think he's had a lot of help. You know, we haven't really blocked him. That's a, that's a good Alabama team. You can't think of what he's playing away. It's tough. Uh, but he's going to be all right. Well, I think we'll be better second half. Hopefully sloppy the first half. But maybe they're that good. All right, Coach. Thank you. Brent. All right, thank you very much. And right now, let's join Reese Davis, Big Mark May, and the good Dr. Lou Holtz in the studio for the Wendy's Halftime Review. in college football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. I'm Brent Musburger along with Kirk Herbstreit and Aaron Andrews. We welcome you back with the number one team in the nation leading Penn State 17 to nothing as we start the second half and uh, Herbie what about the young quarterback now for the Nittany Lions? All right, obviously he's going to have to make some plays here. You know when he's been in the shotgun they've had a chance to make some pass plays work. He's been five of six from the gun only two of eight when he's under center so don't be surprised. Penn State's not going to give up. You know Joe Paterno. They're going to keep fighting back and it's going to come down to how much pressure they can keep off of Rob Bolton and avoid the third down in long situations. Yeah, on third down tonight, uh, they are only two of six. And so here comes the kickoff to start the second half. The Nittany Lions will have a chance. And Stephon Green, who's been returning kickoffs and playing back there, breaks free with a seam to the 30-yard line where it'll be first and ten for Rob Bolton. I think Penn State, like they did in the first half, they have to give him some chances to try to attack. And the reason you attack downfield against Alabama's defense is because Alabama's going to be aggressive and they're going to try to take away your strength, which is the, the Penn State running game. So they're going to crowd the line. Bolden's got to try to get the ball converted downfield against this young, inexperienced secondary that's been pretty dominant in the first half. That can then open up Royster in the running game. But they haven't had a lot of success doing that. Twice they turned it over in the red zone. And here they come now with a first and ten. Royster's the running back. He'll get the opening carry. Bounce off a tackle. Good. First down run. Ball got loose, but it's out of bounds. Kirkpatrick with the hit over there on that play. And that is a first down. Talk about bouncing off a tackler, would be tackler, Dante Hightower, 6'4, 260. In my opinion, one of the, if not the best linebacker, definitely one of the top two linebackers in the country. Had a great shot, real good, clean shot on Royster, and Royster, to his credit, bounced off of him, kept his legs moving, and moved downfield. Alabama puts four down. Bolden pulls it back. Throws it in underneath to Smith, and the speedster is short of midfield as we take a look at the summary of the first half. And if you take a look at the raw numbers, you'd have to go just look at the turnovers. The turnovers in the red zone for Penn State. With a young quarterback, when you get your chances, you just have to capitalize, especially playing on the road against this uh, Nick Saban defense and against this talent overall. They've had a few shots, and they just haven't been able to capitalize. 
need four with Royster the eye back. Royster short of the first down. Alabama does a, such a good job of fighting off of blocks and getting upfield. That time Josh Chapman, the nose guard, got up off of a guard and forced, forced, forced Royster to cut back before he wanted to. But still, he's able to cut, pick up a, a few yards. And now they're in third and manageable. The only two third downs they've converted tonight were both third and ones. And that's where they have to be, third and one, third and three, third and two, to give uh, Bolton a shot. Zug is slotted to the right. Royster, the running back. Royster battling toward it, but he was brought down. Mark Barron, the All-American safety, moving up to make that stop, and we will see where it's spotted and uh, what the change showed. You know, folks, the first time that Alabama ever played Penn State was back in 1959. Joe Paterno was an assistant coach under Rip Engel. And that week, Rip Engel put in a fake field goal. His quarterback was also his holder. He threw a touchdown pass, the only score in the game as Penn State won that. The thrower that night, he's upstairs calling plays. Galen Hall was the quarterback for Penn State the first time that the Nittany Lions ever played the Crimson Tide. <laughs> now what do you do, Harvey? Uh, you got to go for it. I mean, you're Penn State. You're not playing for a moral victory. You're playing. You know, you. Yeah, he's just. That's his way of saying go for it <laughs> with the with the right hand. Go. Oh, let's go. Let's make this happen. One thing here again. Bolton, freshman quarterback. He's got to make sure he gets the snap first. You got to believe it's some kind of quarterback sneak, but secure the football before you try to pick up this first down. He will get up underneath his center. Dive for it as the Crimson Tide dives on him, and he appears to have it. Yeah, he's Klopax, Pinnell, and Wisniewski. Herbie in the middle of that offensive line. Yeah, he does a good job here. Picks up the first down. It, you know, it's, it's the small victories when you're down 17 to just try to, hey, you've crossed midfield. First drive of the second half to try to get things going, to get yourselves and your, your defense and your coaches to believe, hey, we're, gonna, we're not done yet. We're going to fight back and get into this game. So picking up a few first downs here also does a good job of relaxing Rob Bolden and gets him settled down here in the second half. Bracket being shut out. Mori is out to the right. Fumble. Dives back on it. And that would have cost him a first down. Uh, Herbie, as you said, the one thing they had to be sure of on that fourth down was to uh, cover up on the uh, the center exchange. They've already had a fumble and an interception. Looks like that ball may have bumped something as he's trying to seat the football, seating the football, just trying to bring it into your belly to secure it before you're able to execute the play. And that time it looked like it may have gotten bumped there by one of the linemen or just slipped out of his hands. They had to beat Big Heisman for that football. <laughs> Second down and long down. Bolden slips green and just a couple of yards because Jarrell Harris number five from Gadsden Alabama Gadsden's turned out some fine football players through the years and there's one of them. I think one of the adjustments to Kirby Smart the defensive coordinator for Alabama and of course Nick Saban's involved with the defensive calls is you got to keep an eye on number 20 in white Davon Smith he made a few plays and he got around on a reverse and some plays in space because of his quickness I'm sure that Pence or that Alabama staff recognize that and they're trying to check things to him to try to corral him. Centimore and Davis check into the defensive line. Third down, they put three down and send Highsmith from a stand-up position. Now Bolden got one-on-one, -on -one, complete first down across the 30-yard line that time. Justin Brown, Herbie, from Wilmington, Delaware. Well, good job, and the pressure comes. We talked about on third down what can happen. This time they do a good job of picking it up. Wisniewski's right there. He picks up one of the big linemen, and once he breaks contained to the outside, he's got tremendous poise. He keeps his vision downfield, and Justin Brown, a backup receiver, 
receiver. Very athletic, tall, fast receiver. Does a good job of separating and making a play. They already 20 yards on third and 10. They convert a fourth down. And so now Rob Bolden trying to grow up right in front of us. Hands it off to Green for a couple of yards. Penn State certainly will not give up the running game at any point. Yeah, it's every time Penn State runs the football, and they're doing a good job. Galen Hall doing a good job of mixing up the, the run with the pass. But look how look how tough sledding it is to try to move the ball against this Alabama defense. They do a good job of penetrating. The linebackers are freed up because the defensive linemen are eating up most of the blocks. It's just very, very tough for Revan Royster to find any room at all to run against Alabama. And Royster's back in. Bolden takes a deep drop and uh, tries to drop another screen out that time, but uh, Alabama had a read perfectly. Hightower, Dante Hightower. Hightower's actually sitting there waiting for Royster. You're right. It was a screen set up off to the right. And Dante Hightower, one of the more veteran defenders for Alabama, the leader now of this defense with Orlando McClain moving off to the NFL and the Oakland Raiders. He just sat there, read it perfectly. There's nothing Bolden could do, and now he faces another third down and long. Hightower came from a stand-up position. He steps up into a gap, and now he backs out a step. But here they come. Incomplete intercepted, was it? It was picked off by Lester. And he made the catch, the official says. We'll take a look on replay here. That's his second interception. Uh, it's a, it's another mistake down close deep in Alabama territory. The pressure that time was pretty intense. Ed Stenson got in, and I really believe that because Stenson came in, it forced Bolton to throw the ball. He couldn't step into his throw and throw it to Zug. Didn't get a lot on it, and I got to give a lot of credit to Robert Lester for adjusting back to the football, getting his hands under it, and making another interception, another big turnover for Alabama. Trent Richardson who had better than 100 yards rushing is lined up with McElroy split up. It's a wildcat again, and here comes Richardson. I'll tell you what, folks. <laughs> How would you like to have a runner who's won a Heisman Trophy, and you come back the next year, and you unveil another candidate for that trophy? This is a good-looking running back here. Brent, we saw him play so much last year, and you can see the numbers that he's put up and how physical he is. 73 of his 102 kid. yards after contact. We've talked all week long about how he loves to live in the weight room. And Mark Ingram here, very, very good friends. First down and 10. McElroy back under eighth. Sideline Julio. Tries to dive for it and can't. Lynn was the defensive back. Danton Lynn at 6'1", 200 pounds. Junior out of Texas actually running pretty good. A little bit of bumping, but because he's in stride and in position, it's the, uh, the officials are going to let you play that time. Now, if you're behind the receiver running downfield and you're bumping like that trying to catch up, you might get a call. But that time, he was in great position, allowing him to kind of position himself with his arm there and run stride for stride with Julio Jones. Good coverage. Now, Richardson splits to the outside as a receiver. Incomplete. He was trying to come underneath to Alexander. Because every time that Greg McElroy misses a pass, you just get to the point where you wonder, boy, what, what did the receiver do wrong? I mean, he is, I love the word command for college quarterbacks. You talk about a guy who's been around, has so much confidence, not just in this system, but you know, when you haven't lost a, a, a football game since you were a starting quarterback going back to eighth grade, there's a certain presence around you. And he's really an extension of Jim McElwain, the offensive coordinator, out onto the field. The team that beat him, the Cross Timbers Middle School. Eighth grade. <laughs> Eight to six was the final score. McElroy and completes it to the outside. And that's Darius Hanks. Talk about the Davy O'Brien Award for the premier quarterback. Well, McElroy was a semifinalist 
for the award last year so he's certainly on the watch list again this year and uh, not happy with himself there. Great job by Penn State third down and long did a good job of dropping the coverage. The only thing McElroy could do was try to dump it underneath and hope that Hanks could make somebody miss and that time he didn't get upfield and they were able to force the punt. Two return men and back deep. Takes his time. There was no rush and hangs up for his coverage. Fair catch at the 25 yard line by Davon Smith. Good job by the punter that time. Shot it. Had an extra beat. He let the gunners get downfield before he kicked. We'll take a break. 17 nothing. The number one team in the country leads it. The 79 Sugar Bowl for a national championship. Watch Don McNeil come up on Scott Fitzke of Penn State. For events, a touchdown. And then on third and fourth down, Bama stuffs them. Man, here just a short time ago, McNeil was introduced to this crowd. He played in the NFL, a terrific defensive back. Folks, that's just part of the story. The quarterback for Penn State tonight, Rob Bolden, Don McNeil is his great uncle. So here is Bolden handing the ball off to Royster. So you talk about how things go round and round and come around. And McNeil was asked, are you going to pull for your nephew? And he said, no way. No way. I'm behind the <laughs> alma mater. Got to stick with the alma mater, especially after that history of making that play down close by the goal line like that. So having a chance to set up the goal line stand. Some great pictures there. Stefan Green. Was the ball carrier puts him up in second down. Bama has not been able to finish Penn State off. That's good news for the Nittany Lions. The bad news is they can't finish off their offensive drives. Play fake. Middle. Complete. And there's Brackett's first catch of the night. They got to the big fellow who is quite a story. He was recruited as a quarterback. And when they got ready to play Notre Dame, he was Jeff Smarsha. And they said, you're pretty good. And here he is, Herbie. Yeah, this time Harris can't quite get back far enough. And it's a really good throw by Rob Bolden stepping in there. And the great thing about Brackett is his size. Here's Bolden. This is good technique for a young freshman. Gets it over top of Harris. And because the bracket is so big, it makes it a much easier throw across the middle into traffic for the young quarterback. Here's your first down. And movement. False start. False start. Offense. Number 74. Five yard penalty. The down the range first. That is the first penalty against the Nittany Lions here tonight. Yeah, they've turned the football over a bunch tonight, but they've not had many penalties. There have been four penalties called against the Crimson Tide. And this is a costly one. And it puts the youngster back in first and 15. On right, first down, going deep into traffic and in complete. Moy was pretty well covered. Baron and Kirkpatrick were on him, Herbie. This is where a young quarterback makes up his mind before the throw. To, he's going to throw to a certain receiver. Boy, that time is not only covered by Kirkpatrick, who's sinking back into coverage, but Mark Barron comes over as well. Double coverage, and he puts the ball up into the air. Very, very fortunate that right there, Mark Barron did come over and make an interception. Second down and 15. Thanks. Keeps it himself. Bolden crosses the 40, and Jarrell Harris makes another stop. Well, you know, we talked about that 79 game. Well, with six minutes left, it was the fumble that gave the Nittany Lions a chance. We showed you second down. But then twice they tried to go over the top after Joe Park called timeout. Barry Krause standing in there on fourth down, and the Bear and his boys had a national championship. Third down and long. Middle wide open, incomplete. 
He went to Zug. Alabama showed pressure before the snap, and then they backed out of it, trying to hope to confuse the offensive line. But the line does a pretty good job of holding on here. Zug comes across the middle where Brackett was before. That's a, that's a throw where you have to be able to secure that if you're Zug. You've got a true freshman on the road. He makes a great throw, sits in there as long as he can, puts the ball right there. It would have been a great catch, but still, Zug's got to make that catch for the first down. Yeah, Jones is back, uh, back deep again. Farrow is the punter. Again, another short punt. Let it go out of bounds. So the freshman has punted the last two out of bounds. We'll take a break. Alabama still pitching a shutout in Tuscaloosa. Reese Davis with you in the studio on ABC, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Denny Hamlin is leading at Richmond. Remember, just a couple of spots remaining in that 12-driver field for the chase for the Sprint Cup. That will be decided by the end of the night. On ESPN2, there was a lightning delay in Knoxville, and then lightning is struck as the Volunteers of Tennessee leading Oregon 13-3 late in the first half. Former Boise State defensive coordinator Justin Wilcox now at Tennessee doing a job against the Ducks. Reese, remember Tennessee was an underdog at home in Knoxville in that game tonight. And uh, here's Jones, who'll be pushed out of bounds. And uh, Aaron, we noticed uh, McElroy was a little bit unhappy as he came off the field. Certainly was, Brian. Right before the offense just took the field, they had a pretty close huddle over here on the sidelines. McElroy fired up, yelling at some guys, tugging at his helmet. He's upset that Bama's offense just hadn't, hadn't finished drives. And that was the focus of Nick Saban's halftime speech. He was telling me, I played against Joe Paterno before. Penn State always seems to find a way to come back and they did when I was coaching at Michigan State a lot of respect that he has for Joe Pop. yeah that that's for sure all right remember after those two touchdowns they kicked a field goal and then misfired on the field goal now here comes Richardson he has been the offensive standout for the tie tonight as Lynn makes it and uh, you can't say enough you would have to say when you heard me that Alabama by far is the best running back group in the country there's no doubt about that. And once Mark Ingram comes back, uh, you, the, definitely the best tandem. R Ingram and Richardson together uh, is by far the best. But what's funny is people thought when Ingram went down, boy, what's going to happen this Alabama offense? How are they going to be okay? Maybe they didn't see Trent Richardson last year. This guy was sensational a year ago as a true freshman. Gained better than 100 yards against Texas in that championship game. And here comes Richard Herbie. Take a look at tonight's good hands play brought to you by Allstate. Can't wait to see it. Trent Richardson and everything that he's been able to do tonight ever since he touched the ball for the first time. I love that jump cut. Anytime a big powerful back has that kind of quickness and he doesn't lose any of his speed once he makes his move. Oh, it's tough to bring him down. 5'11", about 220 pounds, physical and athletic. There's Mark Ingram even chipping in, pulling a little of that grass off his helmet. <laughs> and they've used him as wide receiver, wildcat back tonight, and as a running back. So he's done a little bit of everything. And uh, this will bring up a bring up a third down. And you know, Nick Saban said it best to Aaron. Uh, Joe Paterno's teams suddenly just they just don't disappear they stay in the neighborhood that's the kind of character that he recruits you know he's always had teams that are going to fight you for four quarters they had their hands full coming into this game with a true freshman quarterback playing on the road and this Alabama offense they have 41 plays 21 runs and 20 pass plays great balance third down and two and uh, here comes a pass again if he gets it off and he does underneath to Richardson Still breaks free with that strength of his for a first down. Look at the size of those arms. I mean, he is. Man, he's a man, this youngster from Pensacola. Look at those. Uh, he's, if he's not studying film or in class or doing whatever it takes to get ready, they can't get him out of the weight room. I mean, as a kid, he just grew up with a passion for lifting weights and the strength that he has in his lower body, and of course you can see it in the upper body, but it's the lower body and the leg drive with the speed. That rare combination, tough to bring down. And here he is in the Wildcat. Fakes it. And 
keeps it and Aaron gained uh, gained about a yard that time you guys ready for these numbers up there what he does how he destroys the Alabama weight room he benches at a max 460 pounds and, and he says that's easy and strength coach <laughs> Scott Cochran is like no stop tries to hold him back but he doesn't want to guys squats over 600 pounds there you go number three Trent I, Richardson. <laughs> Aaron I need a forklift to get either of those up uh, there is the uh, the strength coach and he's a character too <laughs> he rallies the troops early. second down and long from the pistol swing to Richardson and here he comes and he doesn't just step out of bounds he said come on let's bring it on here let's have a fist fight over here you imagine him playing high school football a couple years ago the guys trying to bring him down out of Pensacola I think they get out of his way they don't want to bother with it I admire Penn State for stepping in right here oh I mean that takes courage wow. Dan Tom Lynn stepping in there Hanks comes in from the Alabama sideline. When you play Alabama, you get ready for an NFL substitution pattern. Three and four at a time on both offense and defense. They come at you with the full package. Third down and six. Richardson again. Barging for the first down. Uh, they, they were yeah, able. They might mark a little bit short here, Herbie. They do. Yeah. I thought for sure he had it. I am with you. I thought the spot maybe uh, take another, take another look at that. The crowd wants that first down too. But here again, because of the speed on the perimeter at wide receiver, these guys are getting downfield. The Penn State secondary has to respect that. And then you're able to just dump it down to Trent Richardson. He almost picked it up, but they're still going to go for it. Let's see how close this is. Now it looked like the ball actually did go maybe about a half a yard short. But it's two tight ends and uh, McElroy's unhappy. Calls a timeout. Seconds were ticking away on Mac. So he'll burn one here before the fourth and one. We'll be right back. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Dr. Pepper. There's nothing like a pepper. And Kingsford Charcoal. For more football fun, play Kingsford's College Showdown on ESPN.com. At about the age of three, you learn to say roll tide, and then you take it from there. And on game day, you dress up in red. And here they are now. Fourth down and one for McElroy. He'll keep it himself and jump in there for the uh, first down. And uh, you know, it's interesting that uh, down here in Alabama, starting back with the days with the Bear, they've got a legend up in the uh, radio booth, too. They have Eli Gold for 22 years has been the voice of the Alabama Crimson Tide. There he is. He grew up in Brooklyn. Uh, I've always teased him that he was traded for Mel Allen who was raised down here in Alabama and went on to become a legendary broadcaster up in New York. So this, there is Eli. This week in baseball. No, uh, growing up in the 80s. Oh, exactly. First down and 10 for McElroy. Play fake. Out of the pistol. Stands tall. Fires. First and goal. Marquise Mays. Just a great job of being patient and waiting for Mays to get clear. Really, Brent, it's about the fourth or fifth time that McElroy's had enough time to make a throw behind the linebackers. Behind the linebackers and in front of safeties. Mays is coming off the field here. We come to the end of the third quarter. ESPN's College Football Prime Time, presented by Hampton Hotels. Greg McElroy and the Crimson Tide knocking on the door. Here's a young leader who had his interview for a Rhodes Scholar. 
on Wednesday. And Alabama will back him for that scholarship, which would send him to Oxford next year. Here he is handing off to his ace running back, who is stopped two yards shy. So we ask him, what do you want to do after you earn your graduate degrees? And he said, I want to go into politics. So this young man has got a great future. Nobody works a room any better than he does, Herbie. <laughs> He's like a veteran NFL quarterback. You sit down and talk with him. Remember the first time, his first game that he started was against Virginia Tech. We sat down and we talked with him. Walked out of the room like, and you'd think he's a three or four year starter the way he talked with us. Isn't that the truth? Second down and goal. They want him to get a touchdown, and he says, all obliged. Dives across for the score. Their first rushing touchdown of the night. Both of the first half were passes by McElroy, but Richardson in from one yard out. Well, Penn State doing all that they can in the trenches, but Trent, Trent Richardson, this entire drive just would not be denied. It seems like every time that Alabama needed a play, whether it was a run or he's catching a football, Penn State just struggling to bring down big Trent Richardson, and that time he's able to put it in the end zone. They're going to take a look at it. The crowd doesn't like it. So Nickel sees the opportunity to coach him up a little bit. Only thing they could really be looking at here is if his knee prematurely touched the surface before he went into the end zone. If his knee touched, and it's always about the positioning of the football, not his knee. Once his knee touches, it's where where is the ball? Looks like he came down on a body, doesn't it? On that uh, on that angle. Let's see if his knee touches at any point. Doesn't look like it. That's a touchdown. Indisputable video evidence. I don't think you could turn it over. But we shall see. Nineteen carries, 132 yards. Big touchdown. It's interesting, uh, Herbie, what uh, Joe Pa said before this game. I feel like we're outmanned. And you know, as you watch it, he had it right. Yeah, he did. He did. And he knew coming in with that young quarterback that. And you know, I don't think the quarterback battle. has played that no, bad. He's lately. done okay. You got to blame a little bit on the turnover. Yeah, he's done okay. Situation. It's probably limited a little bit on how they would attack Alabama's defense. I mean, mm -hmm. Alabama's breaking in nine new starters, and a lot of their depth is new personnel. And I think down the road, that's where Alabama's going to have to continue to have to grow and get better. They've got Ryan Mallett in a couple weeks in Fayetteville, and that'll be a challenging game for them. But uh, tonight against a freshman quarterback, they've been able to really just dominate. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It's a touchdown. You hold Evan Royster to 32 yards rushing, you're going to have a pretty good chance to be successful. Well, McElroy is happy again because that time they did finish the drive off. Got in for six. That's their first points here in the second half after putting 17 up. Shelly tacks on the extra point. It's 24 nothing. Crimson Tide as Richardson with his big night barges in for his first touchdown. Down south, there's two birthdays you always celebrate Elvis Presley's and the Bears. And the Bear today would have been 97 years old. So happy birthday, Bear. Franchise seems to be in good hands here with Nick Saban in the game. Coming off a national championship. All on the tee, and Penn State would like to get on the board here, Harvey. Runs over, comes back, catches a seam, and uh, Reese Davis, uh, what's going on with the Oregon and Tennessee and Knoxville, my friend? Well, Brent, Oregon is awake, showing a little offense late in the half, down 13-6. Darren Thomas, this is a beautifully thrown ball to David Paulson, tight end, catching it, and Oregon ties the game at 13. They've gone to the break. Remember, that game was delayed for a while by lightning. It's on ESPN2. 
Washington taking care of Syracuse after being behind early 27-13. The Huskies have Nebraska coming in next week. And Reese, Alabama taking care of Penn State here. 24 to nothing. First down and 10. And the freshman got a receiver down the middle. Incomplete. Had him kind of break it off to the post that time, and Barron was there. And uh, I got to revisit my friend's picks this week. You know, we teased him a little bit last Saturday night. He promised me this was bounce back monster Saturday. And look at, look at the Herbie here, huh? <laughs> look at this. Yeah. Running the table. Well, and you got Oregon now battling back. Now that you are going to keep track of these and put these up, now I'm going to get serious. Last week I pulled off. Oh, I, tried yeah. to, I tried too many upsets. <laughs> This week, I'm going to just start going with my gut. <laughs> and they hand the ball off this time. And the uh, the running back was red, Silas Red. Now, here's a freshman, and uh, he's from Norwalk, Connecticut. That's in the uh, Westport, Western area. So he gets his first carry of the night. They're taking a look at some players here. Number 25, trailing by 24 with 13 and a half minutes to go. The bigger story here for Penn State is that you're down 24 in week two, and you're in a tough environment. It's about just trying to continue to build for the rest of this year, and you don't want to shut things down. Keep trying to execute. There's the freshman. Slipped high tower. Pretty good looking little run for first down. The young man, isn't it? He's, he is a back that right now is down in the depth chart because of Royster and Green and even Curtis Dukes, who's more of a power back. But Silas Red at 5'10", about 200 pounds, has some quickness. And he's got, you know, he squares his shoulders, much like Trent, Trent Richardson. When he squares his shoulders, he can get upfield and break some tackles. So Rob Bolden, the quarterback of the present and the future for the Nittany Lions, first true freshman in Joe Paterno's era to ever start the opening game. And he's got another first down with Smith. Down to the 40. That time, Graham Zug came from the left to the right underneath. And we had Davon Smith coming from the right to the left. So they're going to cross each other. Makes it easy for Bolden to see that. A little bit of confusion with Alabama on which guy to take. And it left Smith wide open. If you're going to ever find anybody, if you're Bolden, in the open field to be able to get the football into his hands, it's Smith. He's had a chance to make a lot of plays tonight. What a good move on Lowry there, didn't he? First down and 10. Bolden straight back. Overthrew his intended target. Bracket. The thing that's probably been most impressive from Bolden, and, and again, he's made some mistakes. He's got the two interceptions. He's put the ball on the ground. But a lot of times you'll see young quarterbacks, especially making their first start in this environment, stare down their primary receiver. And not only do they stare him down, even if he's covered, they're going to sometimes take a chance and they'll throw it into coverage. For the most part, he's been able to come off of his primary, read his progressions, and in some cases just throw it where only his receiver has a chance to make a play. Orchard Lake, Michigan. Played at Orchard Lake, St. Mary's. Keeps it. Willing to take a little punishment on that play. This will be... Third and uh, medium coming up. Jalen Hall trying to put, you see his eyes right here. He's checking out with his eyes, looking into that Alabama defense. He's been looking at that defense all night long. He's got a little shake and bake for a big guy. He comes into this game at about 6'3", 6'4", about 225 pounds. Known as an accurate thrower, a guy who's comfortable sitting in the pocket, but also athletic enough to run some of the Wildcat stuff and can get out and make some plays in space himself. 100,000 making it tough. And that'll bring up fourth down for the Nittany Lions. That time the pressure finally got to him, but it was actually the hand of C.J. Mosley, the linebacker in the middle of the field, 32, a true freshman. He starts to blitz, 32, then he drops. He just kind of gets his left arm up and knocks the ball straight down. 
Stefan Green comes in. Bolden checks the wristband as his play. Justin Brown and Chaz Powell to the left. Need seven. Slant. Got it. First down for the Nittany Lions. That's twice. Derek Moy on that little slant. Well thrown that time by Rob Bolden. Alabama bringing a lot of pressure. Bringing one more than Penn State can pick up. But again, how about the young freshman sitting in there? Luckily, Moy gets to the inside, beats his man one-to-one, -one, but one-on-one, -on -one, but there's nobody there. Once the middle is cleared out because the linebackers blitz, they gave Moy a lot of room to work to the inside. Now it'll be Zug going into the slot on the left. That's where Penn State's had problems tonight when they get down into that red zone. Waiting, throwing high, and almost intercepted. Over through Zug, and almost through his third interception of the night. I think that ball, that ball sailed on him, Brent. Watch. Ball comes off his hand, and it just sails. He had a man on the back side there if he could have gotten the ball down, but ball just sailed on him, and he's very fortunate that time. Lester in position to make that interception. Alabama's been disguising their coverages, mixing up the looks, confusing Penn State's offensive line, trying to come after Bolden as best they can. and doing a pretty good job of it most of the night. Thalen Jones is now one of the corners. He transferred from LSU. There is the draw play with the freshman running back, Red. Another big third down here. Kirkpatrick still on the field, as is Barron. Now four defensive substitutions. For Kirby Smart. Hightower will set the defense. Eddie Stenson, one of the linebackers. And timeout. Just inside of 10 minutes. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Hampton Hotels. At Hampton, we love having you here. And in part by Bank of America. Third down coming up for Penn State. Where most of their problems have occurred tonight. Once they get close to the end zone. Almost picked off. Hightower dropped back into pass coverage that time, and he almost had an interception. There was pressure coming from Centimore. Centimore gets a hand on his football. Bracket settled right in the middle and to the outside. I think it was where he really wanted to go. He had Moy, but big Centimore, a backup freshman, defensive end, fought through the protection and got his hand in there. And you start to see the Alabama depth up front and how they're able to rotate a lot of bodies to try to maintain the ability to still rush the passer late in this game. Colin Wagner, who was four for four against LSU in the bowl game, will try a 36-yarder to put the Nittany Lions on the board. There will be no shutout. They'll settle for the field goal. Veteran talking to his young quarterback. I'd like to see that. Hi, Reese Davis, Sports Center right now. U.S. Open. Novak Djokovic fought off two match points to defeat Roger Federer. He will face Rafael Nadal tomorrow in the U.S. Open men's final. Nadal going for his first Open championship. College football this afternoon. Denard Robinson was spectacular. The longest run in the history of Notre Dame Stadium. He had 258 yards rushing, 244 more passing as Michigan beat the Irish by four. Sports Center coming up at 11 Eastern on ESPN News. And here, Reese, uh, Alabama clearly making its case to stay comfortably the number one team in the nation. 
over Penn State right now 24 3 9 47 remaining here in regulation with a huge crowd on hand since they enlarged this stadium it's now the fifth largest college football palace in the country more than a hundred thousand here tonight the hands team on the field now for the tie here comes the onside kick fielded by Alabama's Jones and it'll be first down well a reminder that the NFL kicks off and of course Monday night we've got a doubleheader Remember the start time, 7 p.m. How about the hype Jets? Overhyped? How about the Baltimore Ravens? Something they can go to the Super Bowl. That will be game number one, followed by San Diego at Kansas City. The Chargers will be a road favorite. Take a look at the Chiefs roster, if you will. There are a number of Crimson Tide players led by Javier Arenas, who was a star on their national championship team a year ago, now playing at Kansas City. So here we go. First down and 10. And I dare say the tide will start to work on that clock. Mays comes off from the sidelines. They put him in motion. Wildcat and Richardson. Well, Big Al, you know, back in 1979, the Bears said, I don't want a mascot. I don't want an elf. And finally, in the national championship game, he said, Big Al, you're welcome. So that was his coming out party, was that national championship victory. And Big Al has been part of the Alabama sideline ever since. That youngster who's inside that suit, he's a four-year. That's right. He's a four-year Big Al. And you get a scholarship when you wear that suit. Whew. It's on a pretty good run. Here comes Richardson. Ah, the image is back to 1979. That Sugar Bowl game for the national championship. Sweet memories. Winning this coach in college football history and he locked horns with the bear back in the day in fact the bear got him into the sugar bowl for the first time not that game but one just before that here's McElroy now on the move stays in bounds like you would expect a Rhodes Scholar applicant to do and let's check in down below with Aaron Brent when the media Joe Paterno this week to reflect on Bear Bryant. He said, I don't want to this week. It's not about that. It's about my kids. But I have to tell you, Jay Paterno wrote a wonderful article in the local paper, and he talked about how Alabama means coach Paul Bryant to him. And he said, when Bear Bryant used to call the Paterno household, Jay would answer the phone at 8, 9, 10 years old and say, hey, Dad, Bear's on the phone. And Joe would grab the phone out of his son's hand and say, that's Coach Bryant to you. And Jay Paterno finally said in the article, one of the biggest lessons he learned from him that he finds himself reflecting on is don't overcoach in the minutes leading up to the game. If they haven't got it by 14 minutes to two on Saturday, it's too late then. Yes, indeed. Good advice for a lot of coaches. Jay probably called Bear Bryant Bear because he calls his dad Joe. But not used to that formal stuff. Well, the most coaching wins all time. And guess what? Bobby Bowden is here. Raised up in Birmingham, Alabama. A lot of folks don't realize he went to school down here in Tuscaloosa for one semester. Fell in love with a gal by the name of Ann, who's probably watching in Tallahassee. And uh, Alabama said, we don't want our players married. So Bobby said, I think I'll just move on down the road. And there are the three of them. Great coaches right there. Here, Joe Paterno saying, hey, kid, to Nick Saban. Nick Saban told us some great stories this week about how he remembers being 13 or 14 years old, being in West Virginia and going and watch or going to watch Joe Paterno bring Penn State as a head coach into, into, uh, into play West Virginia, Morgantown.
Fourth down coming up here with seven and a half minutes. And we've got Newsom, I believe, warming up over there. And it's possible that Kevin Newsom has the football in his hand, might come in here and play a little quarterback for the Lions. I believe I saw statistically he played a little bit last week in their win. Fair catch just inside the 10 yard line by Justin Brown. And we'll take a break and we will sort out. Yep, new quarterback coming in. The nightcap, the monster Saturday, the man that many believe is the most talented quarterback in the land, Andrew Luck of Stanford getting set to take on UCLA. Coming up next. And Kevin Newsom has come on as the Penn State quarterback. Now, he's the youngster who was expected to move into the starting position. He's a sophomore out of Portsmouth, Virginia. Went to Hargrave Prep School, number 12. Coming in here with 728 remaining. Hand off to the freshman and picks up a first down. So Bolden is finished for the night. Herbie, what kind of a grade would you give him? Well, I, I would say uh, probably a B minus. He's 13 to 29, 144 yards. I, I think people, you really have to understand how tough it is to come into this environment as a true freshman and try to execute. I thought he demonstrated some poise. If I were a Penn State fan with Rob Bolden in the future and what he's going to be able to do for Penn State, I'd be very excited. But this was, you knew coming in that this would be a tough thing for Joe Paterno and for this Penn State offense to try to execute on the road with a young quarterback. First down and 10 for Newsom. And he stays on the ground with red. And yeah, Newsom comes into this game. He played last week against Youngstown State. He was 8 of 11. And I think a lot of people did. And we were there in the spring game. I think a lot of people anticipated him taking over. He was the backup last year to Daryl Clark. And talking to the coaches this week, it just sounded like, you know, they, they gave Newsom every chance to take the job. But... Bolden just seemed to do everything a little bit better. Adjusted to learning the offense in a hurry, made better reads more consistently. So you have Newsom, who's probably a little bit more of a running threat than he is a passer, trying to develop the passing skills to be able to eventually maybe push Rob Bolton down the road. Second down and eight. Newsom keeps it. Nothing like standing on the sidelines for three and a half quarters and then come into this game nice and tight. This Alabama defense foaming at the mouth trying to chase you down. And this is where Newsom, I think, is really can struggle because you know it's tough to see all the blitzes. He struggles in general seeing coverages. Let's see if Alabama decides to bring pressure, disguise some things, or just sit back and more of their, their base defense here on third down. Going to put four down and rush him. Can he get the first down? Yes. Two good blocks on the outside that time that helped him out. Graham Zug was able to pick up one block. And then Justin Brown's able way up the top. I think it was Justin Brown's block right here. Zug does a good job. And then right there, Justin Brown sustaining his block on Jones just long enough to give Newsom, the, the athletic quarterback, enough time to get across that line. Kirkpatrick still on the field. Phelan Jones, who came in, is at the other corner. He replaced Milner. Hightower is still on the field. First down and 10 off a of play action dumps it off to Smith another first down for the Nittany Lions that's been their best play tonight just dump it out out in the flat to Davon Smith and let him be able to run he's come in motion every single time a little stutter step and it's really just a matter of the quarterback feeling that pressure and getting over top of the pressure out to the flat as fast as he can this is exactly what Newsom did Bolton had some success with this and I think this is what this is what Penn State's been thinking that Davon Smith a sophomore he's only 5 7 and 157 pounds but when you get him the ball like that he can make some things happen. 
Good job of blocking by the wide receivers Absolutely. here, Herb. You mentioned yeah. it, and uh, even on that play. First down and ten. Comes that end around. Are they going to throw off it? Yes, they are. Into double coverage, however. Intercepted. Picked off by Barron. Barron. And uh, stepped out of bounds at the 25 yard line. So it was Brown, Justin Brown, coming around who threw it. Now watch number four. Well, Barron gets the interception because the ball floats up into the air, but I'll tell you what, an outstanding job of showing discipline there by Drake or Patrick, the sophomore. He didn't buy it on at all, come up and try to come up and run support. He sat back, and there was nowhere for Justin Brown to throw the football. He just kind of threw it up, and Mark Barron that time, he's been close tonight two other times, and that time he came down with the interception. So that's the third interception thrown by the Nittany line. Bolden threw a pair. Trent Richardson still on the field here. Big hole on the right side. You know, it's interesting what uh, Nick Saban got a little bit of a uh, controversy started regarding Boise State this week when he uh, spoke up a little bit about the Boise State schedule. And... Uh, I honestly thought he caught a little more flack than he should have. I'm going to revisit what he told us after this snap. And uh, then we, we will measure exactly what he's saying here. Second down. Keeping it on the ground, and they pick up a first down with Lacey. Here is... Saban on the schedule of Boise State. From a scheduling standpoint, you know, some of the teams that play more difficult competition week in and week out um, certainly should be given, you know, some value for, for that relative to how we choose who plays for the national championship. So after this play, we're going to put up the two schedules. Alabama and Boise State and we will uh, we'll ask Kirby about this too on a first and ten Boise off this week I believe they go to Wyoming and Laramie next week so here are the two schedules now if you get down into Alabama's schedule and the heart of the SEC there's no question nobody can argue that that isn't a tougher go than coming through the whack and I don't think he was trying to take anything away from how well coached and how well Boise State plays they still have a big one against Oregon State in Boise now Kirby here so here would be the question if you've got a once beaten Alabama coming through November and an unbeaten Boise State what do you think should happen well, I think Alabama would go ahead of them you're looking at eight teams on the left top to bottom that are tremendous opponents and you know the worst thing that happened today for Boise State James Madison beating Virginia Tech if that was going to be their win that they hung their hat on all year long the worst thing that could have happened is Virginia Tech not having a great year let alone losing to James Madison at home so it's going to be I think very difficult being realistic to expect Boise State to have a shot even with a one loss team like Alabama I think a one loss team like Alabama would go by them. Brad Edwards says that the SEC may be the only conference that can stay ahead of them with a once beaten team. So I found that rather interesting last night of course he's one of our gurus at ESPN he keeps a close tab on this and that'll set off a round of discussion big game out in Boise in a couple weeks with Oregon State and Herbie I think you said it a couple weeks ago when we were doing the game or last week rather that you know not only does Boise State have to win they've got to be impressive as they win and they were impressive late against Virginia Tech the unfortunate thing truthfully you're just watching these two teams right here if you put Boise State on a neutral field with Alabama in one night, I think they could be competitive. I mean, I, I don't think people around the country appreciate how good Boise State really is. But it's going to be the resume from the beginning of the year to the end of the year that eventually could lead Boise State out of it. But as far as the team themselves, they're, they're an outstanding football team. There is fourth down and two. The final seconds ticking away. Stop short. The roar goes up. 
Joe Pa looking for Coach Saban, Darius, and Ingram get ready for their next outing. They'll both be back. No question, ladies and gentlemen, it was sweet home Alabama here tonight. Richardson with a big night, rushed for 144 yards, scored one touchdown, cut four passes for 46 more. There's no question who the star was, and that certainly was number three tonight. Greg McElroy remains unbeaten, hasn't lost as a starting quarterback at the eighth, eighth grade. His family, including his father, who's a vice president with the Dallas Cowboys here tonight. Let's check in now with Aaron and the man of the moment. All right, Brent, thanks so much. Trent Richardson joining me right now. Penn State had not allowed a 100-yard rusher in 17 straight games. Guess what, my friend? That ended in the first half. Why were you able to have so much success against their defense? I mean, it's offensive line. We got a good offensive line coordinator, coach. And the offensive line did real good. But what about for you personally? What worked for you tonight? Just follow behind my offensive line. Follow behind the big boys in front of me. It's been a change for you these first two games with Mark Ingram sidelined, obviously, with his injury. Last year, they used two backs. What's different for you now? Staying in, stand in the film room and being on top of my game all the time. I mean, I, I mean, Mark Ingram's not there. I mean, he just has a win. But at the same time, I got to know myself. I got to gotta help the team as much as I can. You told me the other day you're confident, though, with this opportunity. What do you want to prove while you have this opportunity? I can play football. When he comes back, and you know that's going to happen, what will it do to this offense, your role? I was going to make the offense much better. And Mark Ingram on the team, me and Mark, and, and Eddie Lacey, and all the running backs we have. He's going to make the team much better. You're not going to go to the weight room right now and do some do some reps, are you? I don't know. I might just do this thing. <laughs> all right, man. Thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it. Yeah. Brent. All right, Aaron. Thank you very much. Herbie, uh, your final thought on this victory here tonight by Bama. Well, I think one of the greatest things to say about Alabama, anytime you come back off a year where you win a national championship, you want to see a team with some hunger and desire. They came out tonight as a favorite over Penn State and took control and really took to fight to them the entire game. So big win for Bama. It's step two on a 12-step phase. 24-3, the final, next Saturday at 8 o'clock Eastern on ABC. Join us for Saturday Night Football. Some will see Notre Dame battle Michigan State. Others will check out Texas against Texas Tech. For Kirk Herbstreit and Aaron Andrews, I'm Brent Musburger saying so long from Tuscaloosa. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Now, let's go back to our studio and join Reese Davis, Mark May, and Lou Holtz. Take it away, Reese.